In November 2021, the NFL and Rams owner Stan Kroenke reached a $790 million settlement with the city of St. Louis over his team's move to Los Angeles. Kroenke and the NFL paid the city nearly a billion dollars to end a lawsuit that lasted four and a half years. What the hell was all that money for? In short, the Rams and the league conspired to screw the city of St. Louis. Not only did Kroenke spit on St. Louis on the way out, he bolted for nice weather, a new stadium, and a ring. But this isn't the first time the city has gotten royally screwed by one of their own teams. In fact, it happened nearly 30 years before. And for an amazingly petty reason. And why that happened is coming up right after this. What are the four most hated words in anyone's life? I'm on a diet. Yes, dieting is usually confusing, difficult, and time-consuming. Meal prep sucks. Counting calories sucks. Cleanup sucks. Factor is a meal service plan that makes nutritional eating easy from start to finish. Their meals come ready to go, right to your doorstep, and are made with nutritious, healthy ingredients that are good for you. Plus, there's no guesswork. Putting together a smart meal plan that gets results is easy. They have meals for every type of diet. I love their low-calorie, protein-rich smoothies, and their ready-made meals are delicious. I'm not joking about that. Give their meals a try, and you will be impressed. Factor saves me time by not leaving the house or having to clean up. Heat it, eat it, toss it. So after this video, head to go.factor75.com slash 5points120 and use code 5points120 to get $120 off. Again, that's go.factor75.com slash 5points120 from the link below and use code 5points120 to get $120 off. Back in 1987, it was the Cardinals that screwed over the gateway to the West. No, not these Cardinals. We're talking about the St. Louis Cardinals of the NFL. The Cardinals were never a powerhouse in St. Louis, but they did compile a 481 winning percentage, which believe it or not is better than the franchise has done in either Chicago or Arizona, their previous and current homes. When the Cardinals made their move from Chicago in 1960, their relocation was unanimously approved. But there was one thing that still needed to be settled. The Bidwells, the family that owned the team, needed permission from the St. Louis Cardinals baseball team to use the name Cardinals. The football Cardinals were the first and only team in American sports history to move to a city where there was already a professional sports team that shared the same name. Yeah, kind of weird because like they were named the Cardinals before. The Cardinals football team had its best moments in the mid 70s when they were captained by quarterback Jim Hart and coached by Don Air Coriel. In 73 and 74, the Cardinals put together a 10 and four record followed by 11 and three. And they lost both years in the playoffs. In 1982, thanks to a strike shortened season, the Cardinals snuck into the tournament with a five and four record, one they had compiled despite having a point differential of minus 35. They got to host their one and only playoff game and it came with an asterisk. And yeah, they lost. Five years later, they were gone. The Bidwell family packed their belongings and moved west to Phoenix, where they still reside today. In the media, the St. Louis fans were painted in an apathetic light, unmoved by their team's location. But in reality, they had been so beaten down by their team's lack of success and the poor treatment from their owners that there were hardly any left to give. Kind of like Oakland and the A's these days. On the surface, it was hard to blame Bill Bidwell. While the baseball Cardinals drew massive record crowds during a season that culminated in a World Series appearance, Bidwell's football team was unable to draw more than 28,000 fans per game in the same stadium. Bidwell wanted an upgraded venue. Sharing space in a 54,000 seat dual use park just wasn't cutting it for him. So it was totally the city's fault the team moved when St. Louis was unable to approve a site where they would build their new venue. Well, until of course they did. The city actually made two proposals in 1987. The first was an open air stadium in St. Louis County that would have seated over 70,000 fans. Bidwell said thanks, but no thanks. The second was a last second Hail Mary from city officials, a dome stadium in downtown St. Louis. 
but by then Bidwell was so enamored with the idea of moving to Phoenix that he shot that one down too. Mr. Bidwell had his mind made up that he was leaving and it was for the most amazingly petty reason on earth. Like a lot of 57 year olds, he simply preferred a warmer climate. In a January 1988 press conference, Bidwell said, one of the things I like about it is that I was sitting next to a man from Phoenix on a plane coming in and he told me it was 72 degrees there. Must have been March. Yes, Bidwell typically didn't say much about the move. In fact, most times he was asked about it, he would simply get up and leave. But when it came down to weather, he seemed to expunge about it. An outsider could boil it down to Arizona being a more attractive growing market, but given his limited commentary on the subject, we're gonna conclude that Bidwell simply wanted to retire to the desert. And so the team packed up and left because poor widow Bidwell didn't wipe the snow. Mr. Bidwell did think the cards would be more competitive in Phoenix than they could in St. Louis. Of course, when you look just a bit into the future, you'll note that the Arizona Cardinals were unable to post a winning record until their 11th season in the desert when they went 9-7. and seven. In fact, the team has only made the playoffs a couple times in their two decades in Arizona. So whatever Bidwell thought would suddenly make a shitty team more competitive proved to be quite the opposite. It might just be that the only thing keeping the Cardinals from being competitive was ownership itself. Shocker. Players have accused Bill Bidwell of not spending enough money for the team to win. Let's get one thing clear though. He was a charitable man in the community and treated his employees with extreme generosity, but was tight fisted when it came to football. And what did St. Louis think of all this? While the Cards' plan in the desert was to eventually move into a dome, the scorned city of St. Louis beat them to the punch. They broke ground on a new taxpayer financed dome stadium over a decade before Arizona did the same. And they lured the Rams out of LA, and for that reason, most people forget that the Cards even once existed in St. Louis. The St. Louis Rams, of course, were hit or miss. They won a Super Bowl, but also had a lot of losing seasons. I guess none of that mattered in the end because the team that helped take the sting out of the first team leaving up and left just the same. So if the people of St. Louis seem bitter, it's because they have just about every right to be. Hell yeah, sue Stan Kroenke. They should have sued Bidwell. The city of St. Louis lost their second team to greed. And they lost another because of dry heat. Man, that's cold. We're all excited. I think the whole team is not just the fact that, uh, you know, St. Louis is bad. It's not that the fact at all. The fact is there's something new, uh, a new start for us. And I think our team deserves it. You know, we're, 